The gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentlewoman from Illinois, Ms. Ramirez, for uh, five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Chairman. <sighs> well, for those of you that don't know, I am an American and I'm also a proud daughter of a woman who crossed the Southwest border 40 years ago. And I have to tell you that I've been sitting here with a little scorecard of the number of things that I've heard that almost directly say that my mother and asylum seekers are less than human. I've heard a member, a Republican member, talk about immigrants as an infestation and another one call it an invasion. Mr. Arthur, you and your organization have frequently proposed and defended extreme anti-immigrant policies, such as the Trump administration's so-called zero tolerance policy, which resulted in thousands of children being taken from their parents at the border, hundreds of whom still have not been reunited. In fact, you called this cruel and inhumane policy, and I quote, absolutely crucial. You also referred to provisions and law meant to protect migrant children as, and I quote, loopholes, and quote, flaws, and argued for their elimination. Maybe this kind of awful rhetoric is to be expected from a witness representing an organization founded by an anti-immigrant racist white nationalist like John Tanton, but it should have no place before this committee. And then we have Mr. Judd, who has used media appearances to repeat the great replacement theory, tropes regularly pushed by hate groups. This kind of dangerous rhetoric has inspired a rising number of domestic terror incidents across the country in recent years. And all of this for a hearing about a non-existent crisis along a shared border with our friend, our ally, and partner, Canada. So I wanna direct my question to you, Dr. Dawson. Since you have spent your career working on US-Canada matters, I'm interested in your take on how the revised Safe Third Country Agreement will affect migration along our northern border. As part of the agreement, Canada has agreed to take 15,000 migrants from the Western Hemisphere this year. Briefly, can you tell me a little bit about the U.S. and Canada and how this important issue is being carried on? Thank you. The U.S. and Canada are very closely aligned on uh, hemispheric migration issues, and I think our leaders look at the humanitarian elements very strongly. Uh, the recently uh, renegotiated or revised Safe Third Country Agreement um, is a way to impose greater rule of law. It was really a loophole that meant that uh, folks would be turned away um, if they came to the border post, but if they walked across the border and get, got arrested in Canada, they would have the opportunity to uh, sort of park in Canada for up to 24 months while they waited for their asylum claim to be adjudicated. It, it wasn't a guaranteed you get to live in Canada forever, but it was a way to uh, uh, spend time in Canada. And for folks who are, are fleeing desperate circumstances, it's totally understandable. But it was not uh, a situation that Canadians, or Americans, but Canadians, uh, found tolerable for the most part because of the equity issue. We know that there are hundreds of thousands of people who are displaced in the world. Many asylum seekers are doing all the right things, following all the right rules, and are languishing in refugee camps around the world. Thank you, Dr. Dawson. And I wanna follow up on that, particularly from a place of equity. What role, if any, does the Future Borders Coalition see itself taking on addressing and eradicating some of the racial implicit bias that we see in facial recognition technology, given that the technology is a key recommendation in the organization's 2022 Path Towards Border Digitation Report. But we know that there's racial bias in face technology, and we've seen that particularly with Haitian and African um, asylum seekers. Thank you for that question. Uh, our organization has been engaged uh, uh, with US CBP and with Canada CBSA on the very issue of demographic bias in facial recognition technology. We have spoken to them and 
are learning how the technology is being improved, how it is being tested, uh, and that the, the uh, opportunities for demographic bias are shrinking. They are not nothing, but they are shrinking. And so we recommend uh, facial recognition uh, technologies only as we have the assurance that they are secure and we have public trust in their use. Thank you. I yield back.